Once upon a time, Achilles raised a tortoise. To be fair, Achilles gave the tortoise a head start, say nine meters. It sounds obvious that if they were to run long enough, and if say Achilles was ten times faster, then Achilles would eventually overtake the tortoise, right? But is it obvious? Somehow, a Greek philosopher named Zeno argued that no matter how hard Achilles tried, he would never overtake the tortoise. And here's why. To overtake the tortoise, Achilles first needs to get to the tortoise level. But meanwhile, the tortoise will have advanced. So now, Achilles needs to reach the tortoise new location. And still meanwhile, the tortoise will have advanced. And so on, and on, and on, and on, and on, and on. Which leads us to the stunning conclusion that no matter how often Achilles gets to the tortoise level, he will never overtake it. What the hell? Hmm. I'll let you think about it. Meanwhile, let me address the question of the title of this video. Let me write x equals to 0 0.999 repeating. We have 10x which is equal to 9.999 repeating. But that looks a lot like x itself. In fact, if we now compute 10x minus x, well, as you can see, all the decimals cancel out. And we're left with this stunning equality. 9x is 9, and thus x is 1. In other words, we have proved that 0 0.9 repeating is 1. What the hell? I know, this sounds just wrong. Yet we might be able to better understand what's going on if we come back to the example of Achilles. I hope you had time to think about it. When Achilles reaches the tortoise first position, he'll have run 9 meters. Meanwhile, the tortoise who's running 10 times slower will have run 0.9 meters. Thus, to reach the tortoise's second position, Achilles will have to run an additional 0.9 meters. But then, while Achilles runs these 0.9 meters, the tortoise will have run 0.09 meters, and so on and on. In the end, Achilles will have run 9, plus 0 0.9, plus 0 0.09, plus 0 0.009, which all add up to 9.9 .9 repeating meters. Amazingly, this infinite process corresponds to an infinite sum, which adds up to a finite number. And that's why Zeno's argument is flawed, assuming that Achilles is running at 10 meters per second, Zeno's argument only holds for the first second of Achilles' run. So even though the argument holds an infinite amount of times, it only holds for a finite amount of time. And that's not inconsistent. All we're saying is that there are infinitely many times in a finite amount of time. Mathematically, what we're really saying is that the set of points between 0 and 1 is infinite. So eventually Zeno's argument will fail. In fact, the instant at which it fails is when Achilles overtakes the tortoise, right? Now that's interesting. The instant at which Achilles overtakes the tortoise can be easily computed in a completely different way. Since Achilles runs 10 times faster than the tortoise, while he runs 10 meters, the tortoise only walks one meter and thus Achilles overtakes the tortoise after 10 meters. But isn't the moment when Achilles overtakes the tortoise exactly the moment when Zeno's argument fails? In other words, doesn't this all mean that 9.999 repeating is exactly 10? To answer this question, let me recall how we got to this number 9.9 repeating. Well, it was the result, after all, of the infinite process that corresponds to the infinite sum 
plus 0.9, plus 0.09, plus 0.09, and so on. Now this is an infinite sum, so it's a bit tricky, but we've already seen an example of such infinite sum. In the very first episode of Science 4, where I told you that pi was exactly equal to 4 minus 4 third plus 4 fifth minus 4 seventh, and so on, and so on. But what did I mean? Intuitively, this means that if I stop my infinite sum at some point, and I add up the numbers until then, I should get to a value that's almost pi, that's very close to pi. In fact, the more terms I'll add, the closer to pi I'll be. In other words, the relative error pi minus 4 minus 4 third plus 4 fifth and so on is going to be as close as I want to zero, provided I'm adding sufficiently many terms. Now this infinite sum right here is a bit hard for us to understand. It has to do with the Taylor series and the arctangent function. So let's get back to Achilles. How far from 10 meters is Achilles running distance until he overtakes the tortoise? After the first step, he is 1 meter away from the 10 meters. After the second step, he is only 0.1 meters away. Next, 0.01. Next, 0.001. Evidently, Achilles is getting closer and closer to 10 meters so that the sum 9 plus 0.9 plus 0.09 plus 0.009 and so on is getting closer and closer to 10 as we add more and more terms. And so once again we conclude that 9.999 repeating is 10. As it so happens, two digit strings sometimes are the same number, like 0.9999 repeating and 1.0000 repeating. Fortunately, more often than not, two different digit strings will represent two different numbers. In fact, the only kind of exceptions that you can think of are the rational numbers whose dividers are multiples of 2 and 5 alone. And even these have no more than two different string representations. And when you think about it, it's an absolutely remarkable fact about the advancement of our mathematics. Now you might think that the fact that we can represent a same number in two different ways is just some minor technical detail. I think most math teachers would. But in a few episodes I hope to show you that this is actually a stringent limit to the way we have learned mathematics and that some modern textbooks have introduced alternative ways to look and to define these real numbers and they will turn out to be extremely weird. For one thing, if I take two numbers, they may be not equal, but as well, not an equal. Hmm, we'll get there. But we get a crawl before we walk. I think that so far the more important moral of this story is that we are often misled by the way things are presented to us, even in the mathematical world where rigor and well-defined concepts is are supposed to rule, it turns out that we can be misled by such basic things as number notations. Can you imagine how easy misconceptions arise in the real world of fuzzy, highly connoted and hugely biased ideas? How often does it happen that people feel like they understand something just because they can give a name to it? And how often the questions are answered by a fancy word instead of an actual complete explanation. If you have any examples of that, please let me know in the comments below. So I'm trying to build this kind of tower and to go as far as possible. If I have more cards, I can go technically further. But uh, the question I wanted to think about is how far can I go? Uh, can I go like to one meters, like or to like five cards away or ten cards away? Can I reach the wall over there or can I get to? Uh, maybe Europe doing that. Uh, this is what I want you to think about for next time and next time I will have footage of me trying that and it will be very funny because it will have failed uh, a lot. <laughs> uh, what I would love is for you to try to, to do this kind of tower and to see how far you go and if you do that I'll try to feature a video with you guys trying to go as far as you can and, 
would be very very cool if you can you know just a picture of that uh, i would find it very very enjoyable